Guys, this is how to never forget the coverage of the Kepler sporins. Generally speaking, for each generation you go up, the amount of gram negative cover increases. But there are some exceptions. Let me explain. By the way, I've released a brand new guide, Never Forget Differentials. It's packed with frameworks to help you recall differentials on the spot. Comment diagnosis for some free pages. Kepler sporins are a type of beta lactam antibiotic. They disrupt the formation of the bacterial cell wall. Your challenge is to tell me what that structure is in the comments below. So Kepler sporins work against gram positive and gram negative organisms depending on the generation. So far there are five generations in total. You might want to screenshot this because they don't work against these lame bacteria. Remember that the first generations have the most gram-positive cover. Just remember PET, Proteus, E. coli and Klebsiella. For the second generations, we rotate slightly away from the gram-positive organisms into the gram-negative organisms. Remember HEN, PEC, we add in Haemophilus and Neisseria. For the third generation, we keep rotating. We now lose more coverage of gram-positive organisms, including methicillin-sensitive Staph aureus and Streptococcus. But we add in more gram-negative cover. The fourth and fifth generations are an exception to this rule. The fourth gen, remember, all for one one for all. It currently has the widest coverage of gram-positive and negative organisms, whereas the fifth generation has better coverage against resistant organisms, notably MRSA. And now you know. I've got another patient for you, but you're going to have to follow me to come and see them next.